today I'm going to talk about, well, the X200 and X201. I'm not really covering the tablet versions much, but over the years I've actually built quite a few of them, and if you take a look to your left and right, you can see two panels. Both are LED backlit. One is a 1280 by 800, the other is 1440 by 900. They have a little bit of differences between the two, mainly in the screen resolution and the ability to add a webcam and WLAN cables, although you can modify the 1440 panel to have those, but they generally don't come with those. So let's take a look at some other ports. These are kind of just a slew of random ones, X200S ones, X201 ones, and X200 motherboards. I also have a little bit of things to say about the cases. So this is an X201 case. So it has that little uh, speaker slot for the second speaker on the X201 models. But they can actually be Dremel to accommodate a X200 motherboard. The X200S motherboard, or case and motherboard, are actually a little bit slimmer, and the case is designed like that. On X200 cases, they do not have a second speaker port, so you just have the one lone speaker. So let's get into my box of X200 motherboards. I got these off a lot auction a while ago, and I still have quite a few left over. They're all 2.26 gigahertz uh, standard X200 motherboards. And let's talk about some qualms about building these. Mainly with that Wi-Fi switch and that other plastic part for holding in the battery. Okay, so let's talk about cases and get into a little bit more about parts compatibility. So this is a X201 case that's been modified to accommodate a X200 motherboard. The reason that is necessary is because with a X200 motherboard, you do not have the same notch as the X200S motherboard, or sorry, X201 motherboard to accommodate the second speaker. So, Let's get on to the next portion of this, which is taking a look at a X200S motherboard. So, as you can tell, this is a smaller heatsink. I wish all the heatsinks were compatible, like on the X60 versus X60S, but that is not the case. So, you can't get better cooling just by sticking on a larger fan, although the X200S U motherboards do seem to even have a smaller heatsink on the ones with SU processors. So I equipped the slightly larger heatsink off the X200S and with a normal low voltage instead of ultra low voltage or super low voltage Core 2 Duo onto a super low voltage one and put it in here in a X201 case because since the X200S motherboards are a little bit smaller, I was actually to be able to accommodate dual speakers, which is quite nice, even though it is a little bit thicker, but that doesn't really matter when you're putting a 9-cell on the back anyways. So, let's talk a little bit about display compatibility, and I should First note though, you can actually stick a X201 motherboard into a X200, although you will be short one speaker. But I believe they use the same audio card, so the speaker thing is not really much of an issue. Everything's just compatible. So let's pull out here some screens. Uh, I guess I didn't show this off earlier, but I haven't quite finished this project here to add WLAN to a X200S screen with the 1440 by 900 panel. And if you're wondering, the X200S screen with the 1440 by 900 will swap on to a X201 board 
or a X200S board, and presumably an X201S board, but I've actually never had that system. And we'll give you that nicer, higher resolution. So, as you can see, um, if I didn't mention it earlier, the X200S is on the right, and the Lenovo logo is on the left. So, that's an easy way to identify a 1440 by 900 panel in a eBay auction listing. So, I've actually gone through and rebuilt panels before due to minor things, like maybe a think light isn't working and things like that, but this is my attempt to add WN. I'm still working out some of the details, but I have seen it done with purchase WN antennas. On this one, I'm just kind of uh, adding some antennas I've scrapped from another computer to give us our nice WAM capability. I don't really care for a webcam, and so that isn't, doesn't really play much of a factor. And let's take a look at the recently built X200. Uh, let me look for it for a second. Oh, it's just right behind me. Okay, so this is our recently built one, and I believe this one is LED backlit, but I'm not certain. It does appear, it is an X201, and pretty much all of it, all the X201s are LED backlit. So, I just like, I'm not quite sure, because when I first started selling these, I was not able to get a hold of X200 bodies. So occasionally I would swap the X201 stickers with the X200 stickers. But it didn't really matter because on the X200, the only advantage of having a CFL tube is you can replace it with a slightly nicer AFFS panel, I believe, where you can't do that with the LED ones. But the LED ones aged a lot better. On a X200 with a CFL backlight, if it's getting kind of old or has a lot of use hours, the screen's actually a little bit dimmer. But I'm not certain with this one because it appears to be just as bright as my LED one in the 1440x900 variety. So, and if you're wondering, those seem to have only came in LED form. So this one actually does use a non-modified X201 chassis, so it's uh, actually an X200. Okay, so this one actually uses a X200 chassis, and it's pretty much as stock as you can get, except maybe the display. So, this one's actually similar to the ones I sell, and I guess I'll get into the build for that later. But, I guess in summary, that sums up a lot of the little quirks about it, except if you are going to flash Weaver boot or core boot. So, the X201 motherboard over here uses, well, a Soik 8 chip, it seems, and the main problem is you can't get it to really run Core Boot and ME Cleaner at the same time without having a lot of sacrifices. You kind of have to pick one. In fact, I kind of made an entire video exploring that topic if you want to check it out, but I did eventually get it to run, but it had no power management, so that was a bit weird, and the uh, system clock didn't work, so I'm not quite sure if you'd want to deal with that. But you can sort of get it working. I much prefer just using Libreboot on a X200 motherboard, and in fact, I uh, mainly actually just flash these and sell them, but I believe this is one of the slightly defective ones. Is I typically have to, uh, I test them fully afterwards, but I 
managed to buy a crate auction sort of thing. So if one of them doesn't work, I'm not going to return the entire crate. And this one might have had, from my memory, a issue with the Ethernet. So the X200S motherboard does have a WSON 8 chip on it which are the flat pack sort of mounted chips, surface mountable, and they are actually really hard to solder to. And I do not have a hot air reflow station, which is why I kind of avoid the X200S and the X200T for labor booting because of that singular issue. Even though I do have a video on how to do it without a hot air reflow gun, with my soldering skills, it takes way too long to actually get a X200S running in a proper manner. And I heard that when you do that side soldering sort of method with the uh, WSON 8 chip, it can actually damage the motherboard. So. Another reason I also don't sell X200S's is I've had a lot of them die to overheating, which doesn't really sound like much of an issue, but since I do edit video on it and the rendering process for video some, can sometimes take up to about, I'd say eight hours sometimes, on one of those systems and because of that it will actually be like peaked at 100% CPU usage for eight hours and I noticed that with a lot of these older boards they tend to get unstable around 83 degrees Celsius so speaking on that note if you do just have a regular X200 motherboard you don't really have to worry that much about thermals these are pretty well designed but with slim models, you always kind of have the higher temp sort of thing going on. So, I guess though, um, we probably should get into the build. Okay, so really the first thing I did was actually just replace those pieces of plastic there with one from a less used model, which uh, would, will give it a little bit snappier operation there. I also did the same thing with the battery plastics. So those just kind of pop off and you can just place them right back and add the springs back in. So once you actually get that attached, it isn't too difficult to start the rest of the build because the next thing you gotta do is power cable and yeah, you're ready to get your motherboard out. So with these kind of, I don't know if they're new old stock or where they came from, but uh, you do actually have to do a few things. The thermal paste still dries out even if the computer wasn't really being used. So I just go in and unscrew the heat sink off, which takes not too long, but I'm a little bit OCD about the actual thermal paste application. And you also do have to remove like some stickers and plastics from it. So, but the other thing, there's one screw on the other side to remove the heat sink, and you just take that off, get some isopropyl alcohol, even though it's getting kind of hard to find nowadays, and some microfiber cloth, wipe off the heat sink thermal paste, then wipe off the thermal paste on the motherboard, and then you're pretty much ready to go for reattachment once everything's nice and clean. So, Hopefully uh, the sped up video isn't a little bit glancing on it. You do have to wait for the alcohol to evaporate off. And the contact cleaner can also be used to get some of the gunk out if it's really hard. But I wouldn't typically uh, use that without alcohol afterwards. But then you just screw it back in, make sure all these are tight. They have a little spring mechanism on them. so. Just make sure that you're not going to like over torque it, but just make sure the springs all the way to compress and 
don't forget to plug in the little power cable. So, yeah, removing your stickers before you install it is probably a good idea. So, after that, you just gotta put it back in the laptop. It's a little bit difficult to do this because you do have to plug in the the power supply cable and then begin, well, just getting it to snap in right. Check the BIOS version and get some extra plastics out. Um, I still have uh, some spare parts, but as you can tell, most of the plastic uh, pieces I have nowadays are chipped. I have some spare hinges from some screen repairs I've done, but after that, you can kind of just pull off uh, plastic parts you have in storage. Be careful about the one I'm pulling off right now because that's the easiest piece to crack on the entire X200 during disassembly. But if it does crack in the way it's cracked there, it just goes back on relatively normally uh, and isn't really noticeable unless you decide to take the computer apart again and have to remove that. So I had a new PNY drive for this. Uh, I'm just gonna take that apart really quick. And install Debian on it. This was actually before I put in the hard drive caddy, but I wanted to make sure the battery was working. And then I got a, well, bootable disk off the Lenovo site, installed that, and began flashing Libreboot. So I have uh, two flash options for this. For some reason it was a little bit hard with the CH341, but I got it installed and put some RAM in the back and got cleaned up a little bit, then started actually finishing the installation, put all the screws in, wipe it down, just gotta make sure the uh, case whoops clean, and uh, oh, after that it was pretty much done, uh, except for the hard drive caddy cover, and that's just one screw. So. Yeah, I guess that's how to build an X200 in a really sped up video version of it. If you want a more detailed uh, version, uh, you're welcome to, well, check out any of, uh, I guess, my videos on the X200. And in general, ThinkPads are pretty easy to repair, and I'd say the X200 is one of the easier ones. So. I guess that's my video. Um, have a good one. Peace. Oh yeah, uh, also, uh, since I'm not going to add the bumper at the end, uh, yeah, I have a Patreon and I'm on Library. Also on Mastodon. So yeah, have a good one and stay safe.